Hey lads, welcome back after the, uh, the school holidays in quarantine. Today I'm just going to go through uh, four different conic section designs for, for some sort of roof. So I'm just going to say that whatever this roof is, we're going to say it's 50 meters wide along, along the base. And we'll say that it's, it's 10 meters high. It's the roof over a swimming pool or, or, some, or something else. Uh, the first one we're going to start with is the ellipse. It's usually the easiest. So notice we've got half of the ellipse. If this was to continue on under here, like a, like a football shape. Uh, then we know that in the x direction, half of that major axis is, is 25. So we would have x squared over a squared over 25 squared plus y squared over half of the minor axis squared so over 10 squared and that equals 1 and that's your ellipse you're you're done at that point because notice that the center of the ellipse hasn't moved now remember you might be asked to find uh, where the fo focal points are and so you need to go back and, and use those those identities that we've discussed uh, on other on previous videos. So that's the ellipse. Uh, so if we want an elliptical roof, it would come out perpendicular to it would come perpendicular to the ground, and then it would come over and go perpendicular to the ground like that, and that would be your elliptical roof. Now the other sort of roof would would be uh, a circle. So it would look something like this. So you've got the the top of your roof is actually just the is actually a section of a circle. It's pretty badly drawn, but the centre of the circle would be somewhere down there. Okay. So the actual centre of the circle has been moved. So the circle is only uh, some some movements. Just go a. There's our general formula for that circle. Okay, we've just got a small portion of it above. Okay, so none of all of this would be underground in our model. Okay, so we're just using a small section. So what we're going to figure out is A and R. So we know that this is 25 from there to there, and we know that this here is 10. Now what you'll notice is you could go ahead and do a three by three simultaneous equations, plug in three uh, points into the circle equation, and or, or just two because we're only solving for two variables, and and solve for for a like that. Or here's a little trick: that there is going to be a right angle triangle, and you'll notice that the hypotenuse is R, and we've got one of the other sides. The trick is, what is this length here? Well, it's R minus 10. So we can use Pythagoras here and say that R minus 10 squared plus 25 squared is R squared from right angle trig from near 10. So if we were to expand and simplify this, we'd get R squared minus 20R plus 100 plus, I'll, I'll square that, 625 is equal to r squared. Cancel our r squareds, add 20r to the other side, collect those up. We have 725 equals 20r. So if we were to divide by 20, we'd have 36.25 is r. And so our circle is x squared plus a is our vertical movement down, so r minus 10. y plus 26.25 squared equals, and it's r squared. And there we have it. That is the equation of our roof design using a circular model. So we've got an elliptical model for our roof design and a circular 
model. And so if we were to write this in um, parametric form, x would be uh, 36.25 uh, sine theta, and y would be uh, negative 26.25 plus 36.25 cosine theta, and then we'd have parametric uh, equation as well. So notice that it's got a shift in the y direction downwards, so it's a negative. Remember, if you move a Cartesian graph down, it's addition in there. So there we have it, a, just a quick, quick recap of finding an elliptical and a circular model for a, a roof design. And so I'm gonna run you through how you would do this for a parabola now. So you could give that a go yourself. So it's gonna be, we're gonna go parabolic, okay? Not drawing them all too dissimilarly, to be fair. But we're going to go 50 wide, and that was 10 high, wasn't it? So 10 high. So if this was a parabola, it's in the form of uh, x squared equals 4ay. It's in that form because it's going this way. Uh, I know it's a negative, but that a is just going to come out to be negative for us anyway. So I'll just keep it positive for now. And it's been moved up 10, hasn't it? So it's x squared equals 4ay uh, moved up 10, so minus 10. I believe that's that's right. So we just need to solve for a. Now, if we put this point on here, which is at 0, 10, you'll notice you'd actually just get a, a 0 equals 0. So that's, that point's not going to help us solve for a. This point here will, though. So that point there, and it's a width of 50, so it's 25 and 0. So put that in. 25 squared should be 4a times negative 10, because that's 0 minus 10. So 625 is equal to negative 40a. So we need to divide by negative 40. So 625 divided by negative 40, negative 15.625, negative 15.625, and that gives us A. So if we had a parabolic roof, the equation would be x squared minus, uh, sorry, equals, now I need times this by 4, negative 62.5. y minus 10, and there you have a parabolic model of the roof or ceiling. Now, the focal point, remember, is A, so it's negative, or it's 15.625 down in the direction of this graph. So it must be about uh, negative, it's negative 5.62. So it's, it's, the focal point's actually somewhere under the ground. Uh, which is probably a good thing. If this was like a roof of a pool, it can be quite noisy in the pool sometimes, so you wouldn't want all that noise being focused to a central point. It's actually going to be quite nice if, if this was a pool or something, that that noise is getting focused to a point that's underground, so it's more evenly distributed. So there we have it. Uh, the last one I'm going to do is the hyperbola, and it's pretty tricky. So... What we want with the hyperbola, now you'll see why this is so tricky. If this is my design here, and it's got a width of 50 and a height of 10, remember it has asymptotes, and so the actual center of this thing is way up there. Okay, so the center of my graph is up there, so I can't center with my vertex like I can in the um, with the parabola and I can't center the, the entire system like I can the ellipse and I don't have symmetry like I can for the circle so I'm just going to run you through if we had hyperbolas going 
like this, then that's in the form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is 1. If we have hyperbolas like this, going up this way, then we use y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. And it looks like it's going to be this form here, isn't it? We're going to have to use this model because our roof design is orientated like this. So we're doing something with this model here. So if you're ever doing an elliptical model, you need to ask yourself a certain question. Is the width... greater than 2 times the height. So, is, is the width, or should I say, sorry, is, hang on, is half the width greater than two times the height. So it's half the width, so it's 25 greater than two times the height. Yes. Then we can fit a hyperbola to it. If half of that width, so it's 25, if, that's, if that width there from the center to the outside, if that is greater than two times the height, then we can fit a hyperbola um, and I'll prove that at the end of the video actually so I'm just grabbing another piece of paper so half the width is greater than two times the height and I'll prove that at the end it just means we can fit a hyperbola and this is how we're going to do it with one new piece of information if we have a hyperbola and it has a focal point then a hyperbola also has what is called a lattice rectum. A lattice rectum or a recta. They also use recta. So a hyperbola can also have a lattice recta. Right, it has a width. So in this form, we have y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals 1. And the lattice rectum, so the lattice rectum length is actually equal to 2a squared over b. Right, so that's some information we can use. So we know that that's going to be 50. So equation 1, 50 is equal to the lattice rectum length, 2a squared over b. I'm not going to prove the lattice rectum length. This is just, just using it. Is, uh, is pretty impressive in itself. So the second equation that we have is that the distance from the center to the focal point is C and the distance from the center to the vertex is B. So we know that C is B plus 10, don't we? C is B, the distance from the center to the vertex, plus from the vertex to the focal point. So you'll notice that in this one, we're forcing the focal point to be at the ground of our hyperbola. Our third equation is our relationship between C, B, and A, and that is C squared is B squared plus a squared. So it's a nice one because it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. C squared is B squared plus A squared. And so it's pretty tough from this point on to see what you have to do, but we're going to have to replace uh, C and A in this equation from these ones. So we can get A squared, divide both sides by 2, and times by B. There we have it, we've got a squared in terms of b. 
So c squared, sorry. So we can put a squared in for b. So we've got b squared plus 25. And that's going to be equal to c squared, which is b plus 10 squared. Okay. Now we can solve for b. It's just a quadratic, isn't it? So we've got b squared plus 25 equals b squared plus 20b plus 100. Uh, sorry, 25b. If we drop that. So the b squareds cancel. We can subtract 20b. We have 5b equals 100. b equals 20. All right, if b equals 20, c is 30. And what's A going to be? Well, if we take 30 squared and take away 20 squared, and then square root that answer, 22.4. And so our equation for our hyperbola is y squared, well, to be careful here because I do have a vertical shift so I have to shift that up by C so that's y minus 30 squared over a squared sorry over b squared uh, over 400 minus there's no horizontal shift so it's just x squared over and we have a squared so and that was 500 and that equals one. And now we have our hyperbolic roof design. And it's and that is very tricky. Okay, so what you need, if you're ever doing a hyperbolic roof design, is you need the lattice rectum, which is 2a squared over b when it's orientated this way. It's 2b squared over a when it's orientated that way. So just remember I've been switched around. So 2a squared over b. You then use that the fact that the distance from the center to the focal point, which is C, is that distance B from the center to the vertex plus the rest of that distance, right? And we know that was 10 because that's the height of the roof. Okay, so there we have it. So why doesn't it work when uh, that width is less than half, less than two times the height? So Let's have a look at that. If I have a hyperbolic roof design, or some sort of hyperbola, I find it very hard, I find it impossible actually to find a hyperbola equation. If I'm given this here, let's say from here to here is W, and then this is H. All right, if all I'm given is the height and width, why do I find it really hard to create a a find a hyperbolic uh, equation. So we know that this is in the form uh, y squared over b squared minus x squared over a squared equals one. We know this is true. C squared is a squared plus b squared. We know that the center up there this total distance from this focus to this center, that's C, and we know that C is H plus B. H, the height, plus B, the distance from the center to the vertex. All right, remember, it's that B there. And we also know that the width that two times that width is the lattice rectum. So two times W is the lattice rectum. Two A squared over B. Notice I can cancel a two there and there. So W is W is A squared over B. So we've got three pieces of information here. So we can only solve for positive lengths, right? And positive numbers in this hyperbola. So 
if we were to if we were to rewrite this to a squared, we'd get wb as a squared. So we can plug everything into this formula. So c squared is h plus b squared. h plus b all squared is equal to wb because that's a squared plus b squared. So if we expand and simplify this, we'd have b squared plus 2hb plus h squared equals wb plus b squared. We can cancel the b squareds like we did in our model. And so now, where do we want to get to? Well, h squared is going to be wb minus 2hb. Factor the b out. divide by w minus 2h. And that's b. b is h squared over w minus 2h. And so I asked myself, for what values is this positive? Well, no matter what h we use, the top's going to be positive, it's squared. So we have to see when is w minus 2h greater than 0. Now it has to be greater than 0. Because if I got a negative b, right, then I would be solving over here, I'd be solving for a negative length of w, right? Or I might even end up getting a negative length for the focal length. So I have to have this be greater than zero, otherwise I get a negative for my b. So when is this greater than zero? When w is greater than 2h. And so I think what I said before is ask ourselves, here it is, remember earlier I said, is half the width greater than two times the height? So it's half the width, is W, greater than two times the height. If W, if half that width is greater than two times that height, then we can in fact solve using this method of using a lattice rectum length and the height of the hyperbola, and we can then deduce the equation. If that isn't true, then we're stuck. Luckily for us, most of our roof designs are gonna be long and, and low, so we shouldn't come into trouble here. But ask yourself, is half my width greater than two times my height? If that's true, we can figure out what our hyperbolic roof design may look like. Hopefully uh, that makes sense. There's a lot of maths today. All the best.